Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to this special session on the challenges facing Afghanistan in terms of health and quality improvement. Afghanistan has been much in the news over the past several years, and uh, we all have been following with interest the security situation there. And uh, most of us, I suppose, certainly from the UK, uh, hear about what goes on in Afghanistan in relation to the sad but relatively few military deaths that our own countries sustain. Um, but what we are also perhaps much less aware of is the enormous health and educational and social challenges that the Afghanistani population faces. And I'm delighted to introduce, to discuss these challenges, a number of people who have uh, close association and um, activity there. So the first is Dr. Uh, Nadella Burhani, who's Deputy Minister of Health in Afghanistan, who's going to give us a presentation in a moment about the, those, those very challenges. We also have Dr. Nazreen, who's Director of Malalai Hospital in Kabul. And next to her is Cathy Green, who's an independent um, improvement advisor, who was originally in the NHS, is now based in South Africa, but has been working closely uh, with IHI and others in Afghanistan, Malawi and Ghana, and is here to give her views on these things. And also we'll be hearing from Dr. Mirwais Ram Rahimzai, I'm not going to get these right, forgive me, who is the leader of the US AID Healthcare Improvement Project, is a physician and a public health specialist in Afghanistan. So first of all, let me hand over to Dr. Burhani. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, by the name of God, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great honor to me and my team that represent Afghanistan health system uh, progress and challenge in a, such a um, great uh, gathering in Amsterdam. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate and thanks on behalf of uh, people of Afghanistan and government of Afghanistan uh, from generous support of international community in regard of uh, development and security in my country. Also, I'd like to appreciate uh, the strong technical and financial support of our big donor helping and supporting health sector of Afghanistan, specifically USAID, um, European Union, and World Bank. Uh, and it's a good opportunity for me that thanks from great government of Netherlands and um, a kind people of Netherlands uh, for hosting such an important uh, forum and with uh, very great hospitality. Uh, I would like to present, uh, as I mentioned, progress and challenge of health sector in Afghanistan. Uh, as all of you know, Afghanistan is uh, landlocked uh, country located in Central South Asia uh, and suffering from uh, more than three decades of war and instability. Unfortunately, a still war is going on in our country. Uh, in in a such a challenging situation uh, to deal with insecurity uh, and working for developments, uh, Ministry of Public Health set up a mission in front of uh, our um, staff that you see that uh, to improve the health and nutrition status of the people of Afghanistan in an equitable and sustainable manner uh, through quality health care, service provision and the promotion of healthy environment and living condition along with living healthy lifestyle. Style. Uh, through this um, uh, five important objectives that we set up in front of us, we will uh, want to imp uh, improve the health situation of Afghan people. As you see, the re reduce or reduction of maternal and newborn mortality as a top priority for Ministry of Public Health, reduction of under five mortality, and to reduce the incidence of communicable diseases that we suffering a lot. Um, from huge and burden uh, problem of communicable diseases in our country to prevent and reduce malnutrition and improve the nutrition status of our people and also lastly to develop the health system and also sustainable health system in our country. Just I want to show a few um, demographic indicators uh, in the slide. The total population of Afghanistan is about uh, 25 million. Uh, population growth is very high, 2.3 to 3%. Uh, 
and women of childbearing ages 5.2 million around this population. As we see the problem of literacy based on instability and war in our country, unfortunately it's very low and specifically it's very low among women in my country. Life expectancy is very low. I think it is off of the developed country, off, um, um, uh, it almost off uh, of the um, in life expectancy in developed country like Europe, you know, like um, Japan and other countries. The top priority uh, of Ministry of Public Health is improving maternal health and reduction of uh, maternal mortality rate and under five mortality rate in Afghanistan. So this slide shows some progress and baseline data in this regard. As you see, maternal mortality rate is the highest uh, number um, in, in Afghanistan, unfortunately based on the survey in 2002, and still we don't have uh, new data, but we uh, conduct a survey in 2010, will we uh, uh, announce the new data after 10 year efforts and a strong support of international community. Under five mortality, infant mortality, and neonatal mortality is very high, but we have some progress in this regard. You see, we, we can be able to reduce uh, under five mortality rate from 257 to 191 life birth. The same um, other data. Uh, one of main cause of maternal mortality rate in Afghanistan is um, total fertility rate is very high. It's 6.3 per woman and also the usage of uh, contraceptive prevalence rate is very low. It's, it was about 5%. However, we have progress in this regard. Now, traditional and modern method is 24%, but still, it's very low. Antenatal coverage, we start from baseline of 6% in 2003. Now, it's 32.3%. And the same, delivery attending uh, with scale birth attendant, it was so low, but still it's low, but achieve, we achieve a high percentage in this regard also. Coverage of health service. Ministry of Public Health provides services through two main strategy. The first, basic package of health service, that the baseline for this service was 9% in 2003, but now it's about 85%. But this coverage is based on the population and geographical location. But still, access to care by walking, um, by walking it's about 60%. Because, uh, as I mentioned, Afghanistan is a mountain country, people living very scattered and in very rural area. It's important that they don't have access to safe road and vehicles. So we want to um, expand health service for improving the access to care. And the second main strategy is essential package of hospital service that focuses on, on secondary care in our country. The, the coverage of this, uh, this service through this um, lastly approved strategy was zero in 2003, and now it's about 60% around the country. Our third and last package that will be completed, our referral system is tertiary package, very costly package that we developed recently, but still we need to work on this regard, how we should implement uh, um, in, in our country to avoid the Afghan people to going abroad the country for their tertiary uh, services. And we are strongly working in this regard to encourage this private sector and improve the public-private partnership for implementation of this package. We have a problem of infrastructure. We had problem of infrastructure, human resource, especially women, um, um, female skill uh, um, uh, attendants uh, that working and helping mothers in Afghanistan. We have good progress in this re regard. I want, don't want to go by detail. Uh, just I want to um, respond if you have any question for um, great progress that we have in regard of training of midwife around the country training of community health worker around the country, and training uh, in, uh, in service and uh, postgraduate training in our country. Uh, in this uh, 
time, I would like to ask from my colleagues, Dr. Mirwais uh, Rahimzai. He is uh, um, Chief of Party Healthcare Improvement in Afghanistan. Uh, and to present about the story, background, and uh, current uh, situation of uh, health um, improvements in Afghanistan. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Deputy Minister of Public Health of Afghanistan, and thank you very much, uh, the audience that you um, showed interest and in, came here to a brief uh, presentation on Afghanistan. I would like to walk you through a brief history of what happened before 2010 and then an event that transformed people's mindset about quality and healthcare in Afghanistan and what happened after that event. The history, as you can see, um, um, in 2003, a fully functioning um, de uh, service delivery point standards were developed and they were implemented in some of the health facilities. And after some time, um, that was abandoned. And after that, uh, the standard-based management and recognition program was adapted to the Afghanistan situation in 2004. And then that was combined with FFSDP and um, PDQ, which is a, another um, uh, uh, approach to improve quality of healthcare, and it was called Quality Assurance Program in 2006, and it has been implemented in um, uh, provinces in Afghanistan. Um, in 2009, uh, quality improvement collaborative approach, uh, collaborative approach was invited to Afghanistan to start its work on a specific, specific focus on maternal and newborn care. After that. Um, a unit was established in the Ministry of Public Health um, uh, responsible for coordinating quality-related activities. And after uh, um, some time, uh, um, uh, the strategy for improving quality in healthcare, um, uh, we started working on that. Um, this is, in fact, the event, the roundtable that was held in January 10 to, on January 10, 2010 uh, in Kabul, where we had expertise from different parts of the world. You can see um, uh, Dr. Brian McCarthy from CDC. You can see Rashad Masood from um, URC, Kathy Green, independent consultant uh, and uh, um, ex-NHS um, employee, and Jim Hybe from USAID Washington. You can also see Sven, uh, a colleague from Sweden, who participated and who shared their experience about quality improvement in their uh, respective countries and their, their respective programs. I think this was the event that transformed people's mindset. They came at the beginning of the day with a, with a slightly different mindset about quality and healthcare. But after two days of uh, this meeting, we felt, we found that the people's understanding about quality and uh, the, the amount of understanding was um, changed significantly. Um, soon after that, as I mentioned before, we started working on uh, developing strategy for improving quality in healthcare. We were not alone in this effort. As I mentioned before, we had, uh, we had a core group in the Ministry of Public Health working on this from different partners and different organizations. And we had well, we were supported by uh, a group of consultants, uh, Sheila Leatherman, that some of you may know, and Kathy Green, who is sitting with us here, that we are thankful to, and also Rashad Masood, uh, uh, the head of healthcare improvement project of the USAID. We had a task force of 24 people who regularly worked for seven, eight months to, uh, to develop the strategy, to work on different components, to go and visit individual partner who are working on quality improvement in hospitals and frontline workers. What we did at the very beginning, in the very first meeting, chaired by the Deputy Minister, uh, that we agreed on the definition of what we mean by quality improvement or quality healthcare system in Afghanistan. We agreed on the definition, and we also agreed on the different dimensions, 10 dimensions of this definition. We operationalized the definition of the dimensions of the uh, uh, definition. What do we mean by client-centeredness in Afghanistan? What do we mean by safe in Afghanistan? Um, the strategy had, uh, the goal that was chosen for the strategy was to improve the quality of health services and health outcomes. The two components build the, the capacity of the system and also focus on the specific priorities in our health outcomes uh, and, uh, uh, that are identified by the Ministry of Public Health. You can see teams were um, aligned at different levels in order to achieve this goal, and 
you can see also the Millennium Development Goals that the Afghanistan is accountable to to receive it. And we hope that with this strategy, we would be able to um, achieve the Millennium Deve Development Goals or be, become near to achieving the Millennium Development Goals. These are the five priorities identified by the entire structure for the coming five years, five to ten years, in order to improve quality of health care. These are the five strategic objectives, improving patient safety, providing client-centered services, strengthening data recording and reporting systems, uh, improving clinical pr practices, and building capacity to continuously improve. That is more on building capacity of the system. And we also focused on improving uh, um, quality of our services in order to improve health outcomes. Um, they are the, these are seven uh, uh, priorities identified by our health and nutrition sector strategy, improving maternal care, improving newborn care, and you can see down the list. We have identified priorities within these priorities. For instance, if we had in our maternal and newborn strategy or reproductive health strategy 20 components, we sit with the department and we ask them what are the top five components that you don't want to miss in any way, and you would like to improve its quality uh, in order to uh, achieve, uh, in order to reduce maternal mortality in coming five years. And, this, uh, and similarly, we sit with individual department and we identified priorities within already identified priorities that we will be working on for in coming five to ten years. There are many challenges. I'm sure you are hearing many black and white news on TV about Afghanistan, war, poppy, everything. But as I, as I showed you, we had a great progress in other uh, uh, areas that are not broadcasted. Though, despite of those progresses, we have some challenges as well. Challenges are geographical challenges, challenges are cultural challenges, and challenges are economical challenges. Lack of female staff, low capacity, low literacy rate, as Her Excellency the Deputy Minister mentioned, low utilization of services. Clinic is there, clinic is in a walking distance, but still a certain percentage of people do not want to use those health services. Donor dependency, security, and turnover of health uh, facility staff. And you can see the picture that those are the villages in a valley, and you can see the whole area is covered by snow, very heavy snow. And again, I'm sure in, in, in the presentations that you, uh, that you uh, uh, listened to or you had before, um, people were talking about e-health and about very high level of care, but that is very different in Afghanistan. A woman would be lucky in our rural areas to get a donkey to reach to a, a health facility when she is delivering. And you can imagine um, where we are and um, what amount of efforts we need in order to improve quality of our health care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Medwais. Um, and thank you too, Dr. Burhani. Can I ask you, uh, Dr. Nazarene, you are director of Malalai Hospital. In, you can stay there and have a, a microphone. Um, in Kabul, I just wondered if you could give us your thoughts a picture of the challenges you face um, in providing care for the patients who come to your hospital. It, it, that's fine, it, it is working. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And I have pleasure today to uh, present it, our um, health system in front of our colleagues. I'm the director of one of the big maternity hospitals in Afghanistan. And really we have a lot of challenge inside the hospital. One of the challenges, the load of work. As Excellency Ministers told us about the fertility rates, we have a high fertility rates inside the Afghanistan. And uh, this is our big challenge. In 24 hours, we have more than 80 or 100 delivery, or 20 or 15 emergency C-section. This is really our challenge inside the hospital. Thank you very much, Dr. Nazarene. And can you say um, yeah. maybe some of the, uh, briefly some of the things you 
are doing in the hospital. I mean, I know that the challenge is really outside the hospital to improve contraception and education and all of those many things, but within the hospital, how you can improve the quality of care for your patients. Okay. Uh, fortunately, um, our hospital is one of the hospital to start quality improvement program. And uh, we have a decision to improve the quality through um, increasing scale and knowledge of our staff and also implementing standards, protocol and guidelines. Through that, it's the way to we will go on and we improve our quality and also the people's participation with the service. This is very important for us and we will try our best to increase this issue. Dr. Nazarene, thank you very much. I'm going to her hand now to Cathy Green, uh, who has a microphone, I think. Cathy, I mean, th th we've heard an amazing story of real improvement. I mean, when one looks at the figures that Dr. Burhani showed, real progress, but obviously continuing enormous challenges. What, what's your sense of where the next big steps of improvement will come from? Um, the, the, the part of um, the work that we haven't described is, is actually running collaboratives in, in Afghanistan. And I know many of you out there have run collaboratives and um, it's no surprise, I'm sure, that you'll um, hear that the collaboratives have been extremely successful in reducing maternal and neonatal um, mortality. Well, we're working on steps to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality. Um, can I say just some, some observations and general observations? For me, this is a justice issue. Um, women in Afghanistan have a lifetime risk. One in eight will die in childbirth. And we can make improvements. It doesn't matter how adverse and challenging the circumstances, it is possible to make improvements. Clearly what we have to do and be is very culturally sensitive and adapt our approaches to the country. What we've learned very quickly is that success breeds success, and we all know that in the room. Um, we've found the need for leadership support, and we have that um, in shed loads from um, politically and, and also um, within the senior echelons of the um, Ministry of Public Health at national level in Afghanistan. Um, what we've also learned is that we need to break learned helplessness amongst the staff who are used to not having regular supervision and, um, and being on their own for much of their time in delivering services. And of course, what we know is our approach is very empowering for staff. And we're seeing um, significant improvements as a, as a result of that. But what we now have to do is work on the culture. And that's why um, cultural issues within, um, within Afghanistan and the healthcare system in Afghanistan has been a, come a major strand in our, in our national strategy to improve quality. Because we know particularly we have to deal with issues of transparency that will enable those newly empowered healthcare workers on the front line to really do their work and to be able to demonstrate and see for themselves this improvement through data. Thank you very much, Cathy. Dr. Burhani, you talked about um, the, the, the problem of um, training up the midwives. You've made an amazing progress, the 2,600, I think you said in that slide. Um, but obviously, it's a huge challenge. I'm very struck by the fact that we have you and Dr. Nazreen uh, sitting here, two women who've obviously um, succeeded in uh, overcoming um, many of the problems that women face in Afghanistan. Can you talk about um, the, the, the impact of war on, on how women um, and young girls are finding their, their way forward uh, to a better future in Afghanistan and, and the big challenges there? Um, you mentioned a, a very important issue. Uh, I think it's very important for Afghan women to, to, to go ahead and uh, uh, build their capacity. And uh, thanks from international community that help us strongly in this regard. Uh, just as an example, I want to mention that in 2002, we have in all around the country just 446 midwife. And now we become able to train more than 2,600. And now we have uh, in all Afghanistan 34 uh, programs, uh, that 27 of them is uh, community midwife education program. Through this strategy, we want to increase the number of skilled birth attendants for reduction of maternal mortality rate. Uh, for sure, the three decades of war and stability, and uh, uh, even, even sometimes the women of Afghanistan don't have 
right to go out from their houses. Sometimes I, I, I really uh, impress when I see myself as a woman <laughs> of Afghanistan in front of such a great colleagues. Uh, because 10 years ago, <laughs> thank you. I remember that 10 years ago, I wear burqa and don't have permission to go out from my house. Now I'm here, it's not easy for each woman of Afghanistan to use from this golden opportunity and be appreciated. You are a strong support in our um, uh, human right and at least a woman being uh, in, in my country. And the same, uh, now we have about 22,000 community health workers. Thanks God that 49% of them is women. Even if most of them is illiterate, thank you. It is a good achievement and also a good and a strong commitment of women of Afghanistan. If they are illiterate, still they are trying to learn and to do some things for their country. So it is a, it's really a, a huge responsibility in, in the shoulder of government of Afghanistan as our government is committed. Uh, we don't have now any problem in regard of our law, constitution, and all rule and regulation in our country. But still we have a security problem and changing the behavior of the people to know, to accept the right of women and give them chance to work with them shoulder by shoulder. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Burhani. A, a, a final comment, Dr. Mirwais, if you would, about um, the, the progress in quality improvement. We heard from Jim Easton this morning about the fact that we all need to be champions for spread of quality improvement. And you're obviously making very good um, initial steps with the January meeting that was now um, 18 months ago nearly. What, what are your next plans and what, what can this group of people do to support you? Well, I think it's very important to mention that quality is a journey. You cannot say that after five years, everything will be good, and then you don't have to work on quality. We have put a plan, a long plan. If you look at the plan, that's very ambitious, 10, at least 10, 20 years plan. One of my colleagues participating in one of our sessions said, Mirwais, this is, this is 2,500 year plan. This is not 2020 plan. In fact, we, we, what we did, uh, at the national level, we try to establish a vision where we would like to go in coming five to ten years. And at the same time, what we are doing, we are trying to help leaders, we are trying to help uh, managers, we are trying to help hospital directors, first-line workers, what do we mean by quality? And what we have to do in coming several years in order to improve quality of healthcare. We are partnering with organizations who are directly or indirectly involved in healthcare in order to uh, improve quality. We are, as I mentioned, we are working at the very frontline level from the health post where we have one male and one female community health workers, volunteers to improve quality, to improve their counseling skills to the um, uh, uh, people who are working in health facility. We have a long and, um, you know, uh, uh, 10, 15 years, 20 years plan in place, and we are trying to um, help the Ministry of Public Health to uh, realize that plan in Afghanistan and implement that plan in Afghanistan. Dr. Mirwais, thank you very much indeed. You have a community, I know, of support here, and um, I, I have no doubt that after this session, others will come and, and tell you what, what they can provide or help or advise you on. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you to Dr. Burhani and Kathy Green and Dr. Nizza for your contribution.